Hey there, and welcome to the video. Uh, today I want to go over how to control the offset direction of the offset command in Grasshopper. Um, so it's one of those things that gave me a lot of trouble when I was learning how to use Grasshopper, and one of those things that I didn't really fully understand uh, until I took a deep dive and really experimented with uh, some of the input values. Um, and I just want to share what I found with you here today. So you'll know that whenever you perform an offset command, you'll get your curve offset to one direction or the other. And we want to just have fine control over which direction that is every single time. Uh, so on that note, there are only three factors that really matter to the offset direction. Uh, that's the z-axis of the offset plane. That's the curve direction or the positive or negative distance value. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and open Grasshopper here. And I've set up this visualizer uh, so that we can see how each of these vectors uh, play into this offset command. So you'll know that the offset curve command has uh, four inputs. One is the curve, one is the distance, and one is the input plane. Uh, so I've set up my input plane here uh, to be this x and y plane. And I've set it up to be here where we see these three uh, colorful axes. Um, so I took this plane and I visualized it using all three axes because the grasshopper visualization only has the x and y. But we need to know where the z is going uh, because uh, that's the most important factor uh, in this whole offset operation. So the x and y will define the plane on which it's being offset, and the z axis will define um, the direction of the offset. Okay, so we have uh, our xy plane visualized as these three axes. Uh, we have an input curve here on the left, uh, and I've just set it to this curve, but I can set it to a new one. Um, go ahead and delete this, <clears throat> and I'll set this as my new a visualization curve and we'll see these red arrows pop up to indicate the direction of the curve. Uh, we'll see these three colorful axes pop up uh, and we'll go over what those mean in just a minute. And then we see our offset curve here in red as a gr grasshopper preview. Okay, so uh, we said that the those are the three, um, the curve direction, the positive or negative distance value, and the z-axis. So what happens if we flip the curve? Well, I have this flip curve command here, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. And it flips this curve, and you'll see that the direction of the offset also flipped. So um, just changing the direction of the curve will almost always change the direction of your offset. So if we can constrain the direction of the curve to be the same, um, same direction every single time in your definition, then you'll get a consistent offset every single time, assuming your input plane is also consistent. Um, so... Uh, with that being said, we'll start to get into some of the math that determines, okay, how is it that the offset direction is this direction, the orange vector? Okay, so uh, if we go back to the guide, uh, I reiterate that almost all offsetting issues can be solved by constraining the curve direction. Moving on, we have our vector math. So here's the bottom line. The offset direction at any point along the curve equals the cross product of the curve tangent vector or the curve direction, and the offset plane z-axis. OK, so what does that mean? Well, here I have some diagrams that illustrate that point, and we also have the live uh, Rhino preview to il illustrate that point. Uh, so we have our x, y, and z. And then this details what each of these offset direction vectors are. So this is a z vector from the offset plane, so mapped onto the curve, this z vector. And then we have the curve direction. So if you take the cross product of the curve direction and the z-axis from our offset plane, you'll get the curve direction offset in the positive direction, assuming you have a positive distance value. OK, so let's start to play with some of these values a little bit and see what they all do. OK, so we'll go ahead and keep using this curve. Um, and if we flip the curve, we know that it flips. Uh, we know that this, is, this line in blue is the direction at this point. We know that this is the z-axis from this, um, from our input plane, and we know that this orange is the offset direction. X, Y, Z from the cross product. So if we rotate around the Z axis, that tells us that this direction isn't gonna change because it only depends on the, the direction only depends on the direction of the Z axis. So this is gonna do nothing, believe it or not, rotating these two vectors. Now when the z moves, then we'll see some interesting behavior. So we have this uh, rotation which moves the z. And you'll see here, 
I'm just going to minimize this layers panel because it does nothing. Um, so when we move the Z, the cross product changes. We'll see how that works. Yeah, so um, this is this visual this visualizer I'm going to upload to the blog so that you'll be able to uh, download this and, and play with it if you'd like to, too. Uh, we rotate around the Y, uh, and then you'll see how that influences the direction of the offset. Now that we've got the vector math out of the way, practically we don't need to think about the z-axis of the offset plane uh, when we write this into our scripts, and I'm, I'll show you why. Uh, the guide uh, has a step-by-step -step, uh, after explaining the math. Uh, step one is to choose our offset plane. Step two is to constrain the direction of our offset curve. And step three is to choose our distance value, positive or negative, depending on what the result is. If we constrain the direction of our curve, uh, the only thing left to do is change the distance to choose our direction. Um, so I'll show you how that works. Okay, uh, I have set up a grasshopper file, which has two ways to flip the curve. Uh, the first method is to flip an open curve, and the second one is to flip a closed curve. Uh, and this is just to lock the direction of the curve, really, whether the curve actually flips or not. So if we have some curve, uh, this open curve, for example, uh, we don't know for sure whether it's pointing in that positive direction or the negative direction. So we want to constrain it so that it always points towards some vector direction, uh, which is this definition that I've written for you here. Um, so uh, let's take this uh, curve, which is being applied to the rest of the script, and I just want to, I just want to be able to do something between here, between our input and between what gets output to our <laughs> visualizer and offset commands. Okay, so let's take this curve, and we'll flip it in the u in the unit y direction or y vector direction, uh, the negative direction. So we'll input this as the guide vector, and we'll connect this to our script. And you'll see that this curve flips to the negative y direction, no matter whether it was pointing that way first uh, to begin with or, or not. Uh, if we put it positive, we'll get a positive direction. Negative, we'll get a negative direction. If we dive into the logic here, um, what it does is it takes the curve, uh, and it draws a line at the start point in the direction of our vector, and then uses that in our flip curve component. Uh, this is a grasshopper default component, which is important for controlling the direction of the curve. Uh, this logic is kind of silly, but it's surprisingly robust. I've used it in almost all of my definitions uh, to, to constrain the direction of the curve, the curves that I'm working, working with. Okay, so that's one way to do it if we have an open curve. Uh, we can also see that here. We can set this as our curve. It goes generally in the negative y direction, uh, and then generally in the positive y direction. When I say generally, I just mean that uh, you pick a, a vector that best represents the direction, the overall direction of the curve. Um, if we do x, uh, I predict that it'll do the same thing. Um, yeah, so it'll still go left. If we do a negative x, we'll go we'll go left. Okay, uh, so that's for open curves. Let's try a closed curve. I'm going to go ahead and draw this. And this is what we'll use for our new curve. Um, before I move on, I did say that we could choose the direction of the offset by our offset distance. Um, I don't think this has a negative minimum value, so I'll go ahead and set that. Uh, so if we go to negative 20 or negative whatever, you'll have control over which way that this that this goes. Okay, cool. So we constrained our curve, we gave it some consistent plane, and then we choose the direction by the distance of the offset. Okay, moving on to the closed curve. Set this as our new curve. Uh, I'm going to delete this. I'm going to grab uh, this from our flip curve methods. This is a closed curve one. Uh, paste this into our visualizer. Rig this up. In and out. And I'm going to use an XY plane as the other input, and I'll explain why.
Okay, so we take a curve <clears throat> and we find the area of that curve and we output the centroid. Now we want to map this input plane to the centroid of that curve. So the centroid it found is here. Uh, we take our xy and we place it at this point uh, using this orient uh, command trick. And then we draw a circle from that plane and flip the curve to that circle. The reason why this works is because the circle's always drawn counterclockwise. And as long as your closed curve, um, uh, I, I've found that this works in a lot of situations. Uh, so the closed curve will also go counterclockwise. Uh, most, if not all situations that I've encountered. As long as this, um, this centroid is inside the closed curve and not outside. Okay, so this ensures that it's always counterclockwise. Uh, if we flip uh, that curve that we drew, that circle, we'll get a clockwise. So this is how we can constrain uh, closed curves. Um, so returning to the guide, uh, we've gone over how to constrain the curves and how to choose the direction of your offset. And I've uploaded some resources for you, including the visualizer and uh, these flip curve methods. Um, so thanks for watching. And let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see. Any thoughts? Uh, this is my first video um, in this vein. So I want to go over a lot of the grasshopper um, tricks and tips that I've learned uh, working in this industry. Um, so yeah, let me know. Thanks for watching. All right. See you soon. Bye-bye.